Hi, my name's William Kerr and welcome to my video. We've got two drawings of dogs and this is how I drew them. I've arranged them side by side and I'm going to play them back and we can see how different techniques and approaches suit the different dogs. They are quite similar though. They're both Labradors, but they've got very different coloured coats. We've got a black Labrador on the left and a golden Labrador on the right. Starting with a pencil sketch. It's very light, it's hard to see, but that was kind of the point. I didn't want it to be visible in the final drawing, but I wanted it to be visible to me whilst I was drawing it so that I could confidently add in the permanent lines with ink and with a white gel pen. At this stage I have to make sure I'm not trying too hard to make it look cool because it's not really the point. But it's difficult sometimes to be putting down lines that you don't think are pleasing and you have to remind yourself that these are um, utility lines. They're not the hard hitters and they're not very exciting but that's for a reason. They're like the um, the little boys in Monsters Inc that, that aren't doing the scaring uh, but they're just they're just making sure that the scaring goes well and keeping things running smoothly So why don't you leave the children frightening to the Pentel brush pen is probably their new slogan So we can see now that I've got the, the brush pen out I've started to go in and define the the face of the dog It takes longer for the drawing on the left to look like the dog. I think that's because I didn't go straight in for the more recognisable features. Started with some quite abstract looking shapes around the head and the ears, focusing a lot more on shadow shapes, whereas the one on the right is more on delineation. Most importantly though, doing the nose and the eyes first on the mid-tone drawing, there's no question as to, as to what animal it is. Straight away your brain recognises it as a dog. Whereas even at this point on the left, the jury's out. These drawings are synced up in real time. So we can see that I've really progressed further with the one on the right, whereas the black Labrador, I was fumbling around a lot with the face, struggling with it, knowing that because I was only going to be using this black, I needed to get all of the information of the head right so that we weren't questioning what we were looking at, which is always a good thing. Well, which is usually a good thing. I'd hate to rule out interpretive art. Now when I'm working on a mid-tone, I like to think that I've got another dimension to play with. I know that's not how dimensions work in physics, but starting from a neutral tone, I can then decide whether to draw up or down, whether to draw light or dark. Whereas when you're working with white paper, you're already starting with your lightest value. So you've only got one decision to make, and that's how much darker you want to go. Around this point, I started to feel that the Black Labrador was coming together. Now that we've got the suggestion of the body, it's a lot more obvious exactly what's going on here. The head is now placed and is situated on a, on a dog, <laughs> which, is, which is the best place for a dog head to be, in my opinion. So the drawing was coming together and I was feeling a little bit more pleased about myself. And that's a really nice feeling to have, isn't it? Yeah. I've added some more definition with these grey pens. Without this addition, the drawings probably would have stood well on their own, but I wanted to push them a little bit further, add a little bit more information, and see what could be done with that extra layer. I also add a background this is added very loosely, although, especially with our boy on the right, I had to take some care on the edge to keep it nice and neat. Personally, I'm not 100% sure that the black Labrador needed the background adding. Looking back on it, when it was just black and white, that was quite nice. It was more simple, but it's all personal preference in the end, and I knew there was no harm in trying to add it anyway. If it ended up looking worse, well, it's just an experiment, and there's no such thing as bad results. 
I think the reason that the Golden Labrador benefits the most from the darker background being added is because it's actually increasing the contrast between it and the page. The drawing itself contains a lot more of the exposed page on the right, whereas the drawing on the left is a lot more ink, with just a little of the original white page showing through. So knocking back the background for the Golden Labrador promotes the drawing into the foreground. So that's the process completed. I really enjoyed these two drawings and I've enjoyed putting them together and, and analysing them in this way because normally I wouldn't really look at a drawing for this long after I've done it or thought about it that much really after the pen's down. So I'll hopefully make a few more of these. Thank you very much for watching.